Ikech Kono would like to come back. Um, can we give the floor to our radio presenter, uh, uh, our uncle, to come in now? Yes, please. All right. Uh, thank you very much. I hope I'm coming out clear. Can you please indicate for me? Yes, please. You have yes, you're, you're coming out right. perfectly. Thank you very much. It's quite unfortunate that uh, our brother Mazichika is having problems with his uh, connection. Of course, I would really love him to come up. Uh, he is a man of uh, great knowledge, and uh, we will really benefit from his input. But let's continue. All right. Now, since the question is, what do you know about Biafra? I believe there are people who are listening, those who are not familiar with the word Biafra, and of course, the nation of Biafra. I want to give a little bit of background, you know, with regards to Biafra. Um, now, historically, Biafra, of course, uh, uh, was, was a republic uh, that's, uh, you know, um, stressed back from 1967 until January 19. 19- 70, and that was during the Nigerian Biafran genocidal war. That's what I choose to call it because you cannot tell me that it was a war because it was more than one nation that ganged up against Biafra. I'm talking about the likes of USSR, Egypt, Nigeria, and of course Great Britain playing a background, you know, effort to ensure that Biafrans were wiped out of the face of the earth. As a matter of fact, this war was a genocide that was never spoke about. Nobody spoke about the African genocide. Even until today, Rwanda genocide has been proclaimed to be a genocide. Lohindri, a genocide. So many genocide. Of course, the Holocaust as well. All except Biafran nation. Now tell me, how do you hide the killing of over 3 million people? I'm talking 3 million, and you don't see it fit to classify it as a genocide. Now, I'm saying this so that you can understand what we have been enduring as a people since 1967. As a matter of fact, I was not born by then. I was actually born after the war. Now, and I want you to understand what actually, you know, um, started this whole agitation for the restoration of Biafra. The people you are seeing today that are fighting for Biafra restoration are the sons and daughters of those who were killed, those who were murdered, those who were murdered massacred indiscriminately and just like my brother Chika Austin said, there was economic blockade starvation over 5 million children were starved to death women raped, men killed. I can go on and on. The list is endless. Now you can understand the generation you are dealing with. These are generations that have a very bad history. But yet, because most of us are civilized, educated, and we are scattered all around the world, we have learned to go about it the right way, which is exactly what we are doing. And the right thing United Nations will do for us is to honor their charter. We are not asking for something that is extraordinary or something out of the blue. We are saying... AU, you have a charter. What did your charter say about our quest? If what we are doing is in line with your charter, why are you quiet? United Nations, if what we are doing as a people is also in line with your charter, why are you so quiet? As I'm talking to you now, the killings is still ongoing. They go to a village, they burn down houses, they murder and massacre young men, rape women. That is what happening as we are speaking right now. The killing is still going on and Biafran people are being killed. We are mapped out for a, extra, I mean, a systematic extermination. And the whole world says nothing. Now, I am not sure how long this will continue or how long it will go on. Because what you need to understand is this. There is a point that you will push a people to the world. They will be forced to react in terms of self-defense. People must defend themselves. It's a natural phenomenon. Nobody will tell you to defend yourself. It just happened. So I think AU and the United Nations they have an opportunity to rewrite history, to make it right. All we are asking is very simple, a referendum. Now, 
I will not be doing justice if I did not talk about our leader, Mazen Namdekan, who is currently incarcerated in the DSS dungeon. Now you may ask, what is, what is his offense? The offense of Mazen Namdekan is because he is going about this whole agitation according to the prescription laid down by AU, according to the prescription laid down by the United Nations. That is why he is being tortured every day. He have not picked up arm yet. He have not fought against the Nigerian states. So the question is, what crime has he committed? He was radiated from Kenya, abducted in Kenya, tortured, and radiated back to Nigeria. And we all know that extraordinary rendition is a crime against humanity, according to the United Nations extraordinary rendition and yet United Nations say nothing now when you go back to Kenya and ask them where is Mazen Namdekan who visited your country they will tell you according to our records Mazen Namdekan never left Kenya so technically in as much as Mazen Namdekan is in the zoo called Nigeria standing trial for you know a baseless charges that he has not know nothing about Technically, he is still in Kenya. Legally, he is still in Kenya because he was kidnapped. Now, we all know that if you want somebody to come back home and answer for anything, any crime whatsoever, you need to have a treaty with that country in question. Now, if you have a treaty with that country and they see it fit that he needs to come back to Nigeria to answer a crime, there is a process of the law that must be followed. Now, all this process of the law was not followed. It was flawed. They kidnapped him, put him in a plane, brought him back to Nigeria, a jungle justice, and the whole world kept quiet. Mazen Namdekano is a citizen of Britain, if you may like to know that. And Britain is saying nothing about that. Now, I want you to understand why we are having wars and problems in Africa. Because the people we call our leader, the people who are supposed to uphold the charter of, you know, the human rights charter of AU, as well as, the, you know, the charter on the right of indigenous people to self-determination according to the United Nations. They are keeping quiet. Where I come from, there is something they say, okay, an old man cannot be at home while the goat delivered with a rope around their neck. It's an Igbo, or rather, should I say, African proverb. So, my submission this evening is this. Mazen Nam the Kano should be taken back to Kenya, where he was Rendiated, and then from Kenya back to Britain. If Nigeria wants Mazen Namdekano to come back to Nigeria to answer for anything, they should ask for his extradition. He should be extradited. And before extradition, we know there is a process to that. He needs to go to court, and after hearing, and the court is satisfied that he should go back, or rather he have a case to answer in Nigeria. Only then can he be extradited back to Nigeria. Whatever is happening in Nigeria now with regards to his trial is a shame. It's an anomaly. And of course, it needs to be addressed. So, BFM people are asking for something very simple. A referendum. Let's put it to political test. Let's put it to a democratic test. Let's see if this is the mind of the people. If the people want to leave Nigeria, they are authorized by law to do so. And it can only, know, only be known through a political referendum. My submission. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your analysis, and you. I will have a question in what you said. By you all means, mentioned means. referendum. By all means. You mentioned referendum. That's correct. But by, by the report we get in every Nigerian election, your region, the Biafra region, always don't participate in elections. And there's a campaign that you don't have what you have can use to call a voter's card to vote an election. So based on referendum, I asked the question last time, if a referendum is called today and your people don't have voter's card, how will they vote the, the referendum to get the effort? All right. Um, now, I want you to understand that referendum is different from Nigerian election. 
The referendum is being overseared by the United Nations. Now, the kind of system they use is determined by the United Nations. The card that will be used is being printed by the United Nations because they have to do what? Supervise the referendum. It has nothing to do with the Nigerian states. So the issue of voters' card is only limited to Nigerian election and not a referendum because United Nations will make the voters' card available. Remember, it's not a permanent voters' card like you have in Nigeria. It is a just a, a, a very temporary a, a, a voter's card only for referendum. So that is not a problem and that has always been addressed everywhere in the world where a referendum has been called upon. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for speaking now. We answer this question from DRC Congo. Then you can carry on with your analysis. I mean, but there's a question from DRC Congo. I will read out the question. By all means. Second okay. chance may, may play Boku to pay the traduce six of AD. That is a French person from Zaire asking this song. I love the sound of the song, but can you tell me the translation, what it means? All right. Is your language right? Yes. All right, Mazi, that song is a war song, uh, a song that was sung during the Nigerian Biafran War by our soldiers in the bush to encourage themselves. It is more like a gospel song as well, asking God to give them, you know, the, the wisdom and understanding to defeat the enemies. I think that's basically what the song all right. is all about. Okay, thank you. I hope the, the question I have understood. Thank you very much. Please, you have the floor. All right, thank you. Thank you very much once again, Mazi, for having me. Absolutely, and of course, what I've decided this evening is to stick to African ch charter on human rights as well as the United Nations right of the indigenous people to self-determination. And I tell you why I'm sticking to this document. Because I want to use their own document to talk to them. Because it does not make sense that a country, for instance, have a constitution. But their constitution is dysfunctional. Their constitution is non operational. Then, of course, that constitution was useless, so to say, and should be thrown away. And if we have such a great document, like this African Charter on Human Rights, it's a beautiful document. But now the question is, is it alive? Is it working? The people who are in charge, those who are supposed to ensure that this document is alive, what are they doing? Because all the nations of Africa are signatory to this beautiful document. And of course, they ratified the same document. Now, I'm still on Article 21 of African Charter on Human Rights. Now, number two says, in case of spoliation, um, am I still coming out? Yes, you are coming out. Please, who if I speak in, kindly mute yourself. Somebody's online, please. All right. Um, I continue. Yes, continue, please. I'm still on Article 20, and the number two says, colonized or oppressed people shall have the right to free themselves from the bonds of dominati domination, I beg your pardon, by resorting to any means recognized by the international community. Let me read this again. Very, very important. And I do beg our audience to listen and pay close attention. Now, in, you know, people tend to think that the agitators of Biafran, you know, restoration are somehow illiterate, that they are not educated. They don't know what they are doing. They are rebels. Well, not to blow my own trumpet. I am a forensic investigator by profession. I am a final year law student here in South Africa. And I don't know why I should be involved in Biafra agitation if I don't think that it is wise and it makes sense. And that everything we are doing is according to the law. Let me continue again. Number two says, colonized or oppressed people shall have the right to free themselves from the bonds of domination by resorting to any means recognized by the international community. Now, referendum is one means. 
that is recognized by the international community. So what we are asking is very simple. It is something that is doable. It is something that, is, that, 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 the, that the international community owes to us. As a matter of fact, in line with this document. Because as a lawyer, if I go to court, I have to use the constitution of that country I am in. I have to use the Criminal Procedure Act. I have to quote legislation to back up whatever it is that I'm alleging in court. And as soon as the magistrate or the judge can concur that whatever it is that I am submitting before the court is constitutional, that is within the ambit of the law, that magistrate or that judge have no, have no other option than to give me the relief that I sought. The same thing is applicable in what we are saying here because this article, this African Charter on Human Rights, is like a constitution of Africa. A constitution made by our leaders for Africans, for the commoners. But now I'm beginning to suspect this document because it, it looks like this document is a white elephant. It is non-operational because if this article is saying that colonized or oppressed people shall have the right to free themselves from the bonds of domination by resorting to any means recognized by the international community, how come the issue of Biafra have never been raised in AU, African Union? How come they have turned a blind eyes to it. Now, let me tantarize you here. Number three says, all people shall have the right to the assistance of the state's parties to the present charter in their liberation, struggle against foreign domination, be it political, economic, or cultural. My goodness me, can you believe this? All people shall have the right to the assistance. Which means, we Biafrans, those agitating for the restoration of Biafra, unequivocally deserve the, 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 the assistance of other African states. We deserve the assistance of AU, according to their own article. The article says they must help us. They must help us in our struggle. They must help us in our liberation against foreign domination. Be it politically and economically, as I'm talking to you right now, we are being killed. We are being dominated. I mean, we don't speak. If you are a Biafran, you are marked for death. And yet, African Union is doing nothing about it. I would like to stop so far here again, and I will be back again. My submission. Thank you so much. We have a question on what you just said, that no African nation is supporting Biafra. Please go ahead. Somebody is asking a question from South Sudan. He said, during Biafra Nigerian Civil War, Felix Ifoboye of Ivory Coast and the Congo supported Biafra. This I'm very sure of. Are you aware of this? All right. Please. Ma- let me set the record straight. I am talking presently, I'm not talking historically. Because if I'm talking historically, I'm aware of the people who helped Biafra, including Gabon and other African countries. But I'm talking presently, this generation that is fighting for the restoration of Biafra. We are not talking historically. If historically, of course, some African country was on our side. But I'm talking presently. Remember, we had... Organization of African Union, OAU, and that was then. Now we have African Union, and ever the inception of African Union, no African nation have listened to our cry and plea. That was my submission. Oh, Radio Biafra is being listened by millions across of this surface they call Earth, and I can assure you that. All right. Now, first of all, it might interest you to know that in the north, all the so-called terrorist group you are hearing about in Nigeria, they are all from the north. One people, one tribe, hosting almost about six terrorist organizations. And yet, it becomes a question of the clay calling the pot black. The same terrorist people are down in Biafra land looking for terrorists. While six the world most fear terrorist organization like ISIS in the Maghreb, Boko Haram, you name it, Al-Qaeda, they are all in the north. And nobody says anything about it. Just a few days ago or a few weeks back, uh, there was a train that was headed to Abuja. That train was bombed. 
and a lot of people killed. And this was done by the so-called... All right, somebody should unmute their mic, please. All right, we continue. The same terrorists killed so many people and nobody spoke about it. You will not hear it anywhere. All you hear is IPOB, IPOB, and yet IPOB, the indigenous people of Biafra, a very well-disciplined organization, have never committed one act of terrorism known to the international community. Of course, our story is not being covered by the international media, but thank God, because of Radio Biafra, we are doing it ourselves. Now, let me conclude quickly, because today what I'm doing is, I am reading AU Bible, because the African Charter on Human Rights is the AU Bible. And as well as, you know, the United Nations uh, uh, right of the indigenous people to self-determination, that also is the a UN Bible, and I'm using their own Bible, of course, to present our case today. Now, chapter, Article 4 of the United Nations Right of the Indigenous People said, Indigenous people, in exercising their right to self-determination, have the right to autonomy. Now, what is autonomy? Very, very important for you to understand the word autonomy. The dictionary calls autonomy the right or condition of self-government. Which means we have the right to be on our own. We have the right to govern ourselves. It is there in the United Nations Charter, Article 4, in case you might want to go and read it up. Article 5 says, indigenous people have the right to maintain and strengthen their distinct political, legal, economic, social, and cultural institutions while retaining their right to participate fully if they so choose, in the political, economic, social, and cultural life of the state, which means we can decide we don't want to vote in Nigeria election. It is within our rights. That is what Article 5 is talking about. We can decide we want to lock down. We want to sit at home. We don't want to open our shops, which is economic. It is our right. For those of you who don't understand, for those of you who are killing us because we are sitting at home, when we want to sit at home. It is actually within our rights. As a matter of fact, it is called civil disobedience. Article 6 says every indigenous uh, individual have the right to a nationality. Do you understand that? We are indigenous people. We have a right to a nationality. And we have chosen Biafra as our nation. As I'm talking to you, we are scattered all around the world. I'm here in South Africa. Mazichik Austin is where he is. My other brother is in Canada. And so are many Biafran scattered all around the world because we are stateless. Now you understand why we need a referendum to decide our future. Article 7, in summarizing, said, Indigenous individuals have the right to life, physical and mental integrity, liberty and security of a person. We need to be secured. Our properties need to be secured. We are not supposed to be killed the way they are killing us today. Now, Finally, before I submit and leave because time is up, indigenous people and individuals have the right not to be subjected to forced assimilation or destruction of their culture. What is forced assimilation? Forcing us to be Nigerians while we are Biafrans. It is there, Article 8, forced simulation, that we must be Nigerians by fire, by force. It is against Article 8. And for your information, Nigeria is a signatory to this uh, uh, charter. Nigeria ratified this charter. So what they are doing is actually in contravention to this charter. I cannot go on and on because of time, but I want to submit here. And I want to say in conclusion that what we are asking is very simple. What we are asking is not ambiguous. Very, very simple. United Nations, follow your charter on the right of indigenous people and give us what belongs to us. AU, follow your charter on human rights and address our situation and give us what belongs to us. Because if you don't, it would have mounted that this charter 
is a lie, it's a farce, then I don't think there is a need for this chapter to be obeyed. If you cannot carry out what is written therein, I submit. And thank you, dear friends. My name is Amazi Ikechuku Onoha. Thank you, uh, coordinator of the program. I really appreciate the opportunity and the platform given to Biafra. May God bless Biafra and may God bless our leader Mazen Namdekano. Free Mazen Namdekano. Thank you very much. Thank you.